Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Lami Ali. President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of new chief executive officers of agencies and parasitals under the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, in line with his resolve to base Nigeria's economic revival on the foundation of trade expansion through small, medium and large-scale industry facilitation in the country. Here are the names of the new chief executives and their portfolio. Useni Ishak Magaji, SAN, CAC. Afiz Ogun, Oluwatoin. ITF, Kamal Bakri, NSDC, Olufemi Ogunyemi, NEPZA, Nonye Ayani, NEPC, Aisha Rimi, NIPC, Bamanga Usman Jeddah, OGFZA, Charles Odi Smeden, Ifai Chukunonso OKK, SON, Rabiu Olowo, FRCN, Anthony Atuche, NCE, Veronica Sefia Ndanusa, LITF CMB, Lucia Shitu, TBS MB, Oluwemimo Joseph Oshanikmi, NADDC. Now, Saudi Arabia and Nigeria are considering expanding their bilateral ties to cooperate more in various areas to deal with the challenges facing the world, such as climate change, sustainable development, combating terrorism, promoting free trade and investments. The Saudi Arabian Special Envoy and Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ahmed Al Jubeir, who visited President Bolatinubu at the State House, acknowledged what he described as strong ties between the two countries. The special, the special envoy of Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Highness Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, believes Nigeria and his country, with their similarities, can achieve greater heights in closer relations. Uh, we are uh, uh, members of OPEC and OPEC, uh, and we are also members of the Organization of Islamic Countries. We uh, have very strong tribal and familial ties, um, and, and we believe that we are very uh, cooperating very closely to deal with the challenges uh, facing our world. We believe that uh, our two countries are able to um, take the uh, tremendous history that they have and uh, use it to move our relationship to greater heights. Both um, uh, responsible uh, hydrocarbon producers, we're looking at the future, we're looking at energy transition, um, we, and uh, the minister actually also uh, pointed out that there was uh, a need to do more in terms of our cultural relations. Apart from bilateral issues, the envoy also sought the support of Nigeria towards hosting of the forthcoming Africa Arab Summit and Saudi Arabia's bid to host the Men's Football World Cup in 2034. Vice President Kashim Shatima is tasking stakeholders in the power sector to evolve modern technology in line with global best practices to address the challenges facing the power sector in Nigeria. The Vice President was speaking at a summit titled Agbara Business Roundtable in Ogun State. Hakim Jumo reports. The inadequate generation, transmission and distribution of electricity in Nigeria has continued to be a source of concern to many. Stakeholders in the sector, including the federal and state governments, corporate organizations and captains of industries converged on Agbara, Ogun State to chart way forward and evolve modern techniques to tackle the challenge. 
The summit is being championed by Niger Delta Power Holding Company, which is in the forefront of the establishment of an electricity distribution outfit at Agbara, Ogun State, to serve Agbara business cluster and its environs. The chairman, board of directors of the company, and the vice president of Nigeria, Kashim Shetima, who assured that the federal government is committed to ensuring stable power supply, mandated the management of the company to distinguish itself in power supply around Agbara in the next four months. It's all about advocacy, it's about people believing in you. And I have the confidence of my boss so that I can talk authoritatively. He's someone who is very passionate about the Nigeria project. He's very, very committed to repositioning this nation. We all need to rally around him and support him to see to the realization of his dream for a greater Nigeria. Ogun and Lagos state governments promise to continue to provide the enabling environment for the sector to thrive. Such initiatives like this uh, speak to ensuring the sustainability of compliance competitive industrialization. This ambitious endeavor, when completed, will bolster the power supply in Agbara, ensuring a reliable and uninterrupted flow. Good messages by the management of the company centered on appreciation to the federal government for the unwavering support and the renewed mandate to serve the people better. From Agbara in Ogun State, Akim Jimo, NTA News. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akuma, says the federal government is open to partnerships geared towards deepening democratic governance for national developments. The SGF stated this when he received a delegation of former Deputy Governors Forum in his office. Kenneth Nanim reports. This warm reception is an indication of a long-standing relationship amongst these men of like minds. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, is delighted to see the forum is still keeping a united front, despite members' diverse backgrounds and political affiliations. This attribute he once replicated in Nigeria's larger society. He therefore expresses the confidence that the forum has a lot to offer, of which the country could leverage in growing the economy and upholding national unity. There is more we can achieve as one people. Whether the person in the villa is APC or is PDP, he's this. The most important thing is that at a point in time, you must have only one leader. And today, by the grace of God and the instrumentality of our people, the president of Nigeria is uh, Senator Bola Metinumbu of APC. It is our lot as also former governors, to give him your full support so that he can serve our people to the best of his ability. Our focus being to ensure uh, enhanced relationship in, relation, uh, in the way governance is uh, attended to at the sub-national level. Meanwhile, the Bangladesh High Commissioner to Nigeria, Masdur Rahman, is seeking a more strengthened bilateral relations with Nigeria in the areas of agriculture, mineral resources development, technology, pharmaceuticals, and trade. Representing the SGF Special Advisor to the President on Policy Coordination, Hadiza Bala Usman, expresses government's readiness to grow every sector of the economy, for which a strengthened diplomatic cooperation is key. Um, Agribusiness is an important part of um, President Tinubu's priority areas, um, agriculture and food security. We look forward to um, an enhanced collaboration. The two countries are on the same page on issues bordering on global peace and cultural integration. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Oshun is one of the 19 states in Nigeria facing the outbreak of diphtheria. Femi Afariogun in this report looks at efforts of Oshun state governments to stop the spread of the disease. Diphtheria, a bacteria infection that affects the nose, throat and skin, is a highly contagious infection that can cause breathing difficulties and heart problems that can be fatal, particularly in children. A spike in cases of diphtheria in Nigeria affected Osho, as the state has so far confirmed three cases. 
apart from reactivating our emergency operation centers, uh, the government too has given support for us to be able to get those drugs that are necessary in the management of uh, any case. As at 3rd of October, NCDC confirmed that Nigeria recorded 13,204 suspected cases while 8,406 cases were confirmed from 114 local government areas across the country. In Oshogbo Femi, Afari Ogun, NTA News. Now, Femi is standing by in Oshogbo for an update on cases of diphtheria in Oshun. Femi, uh, tell us how the state government is handling confirmed cases of the disease. Lami, good afternoon. Welcome to Oshobo. Uh, the index case of uh, diphtheria happened January this year in Oshun State. And from January to date, uh, we have 25 suspected cases. I have here with me the Director of Public Health, Oshun State Ministry of Health, who will shed more light on the, on the statistics of diphtheria in Oshun State and what the state government is doing to contain, contain the spread of the, of the disease in the state. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, viewers at home. Uh, what has been the effort of the state government to contain? Well, um, uh, firstly, before I go into the effort of the state government, I would like to brief about the statistics we have in Oshun State. As you know, Oshun State, we reported, we recorded 25 suspected cases of diphtheria this year since January. And we had only three confirmed cases from two local governments in the state. That is Elisha East and Oshobo. Uh, we had two cases from Malaysia, one from Oshobo. Eventually, we lost the case. That means that we recorded about 33% fatality, uh, case fatality ratio. So that's what so far about it. Now, the, the government, at the inception, the, 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 the incident management um, of the public health department for diphtheria, is the management was activated. After the application, we got support from the state government, national agencies, and our partners, our partners to WHO and the UNICEF. And we have been able to train our eight workers. We trained over 300 eight workers in the state as to know how to make the diagnosis, accurate diagnosis of diphtheria. Also, we strengthen our laboratory system in the state. Uh, we, 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 we uh, provide uh, jingles and Harry, we had we had them on both television and TV stations. Also, we visited TV stations and radio stations to create awareness to our community about this disease. Okay, okay. Uh, our vaccination seems to be one major thing stakeholders are looking at. What is the state government doing regarding this? As as we all know, that diphtheria is a vaccine can prevent it. Because we discovered that majority of the area where they were not fully immunized. I mean, especially in the age group. All the age group can be affected, but children that were not really fully immunized are more at risk of having the disease. So now, in, fact, in, the, in, in our state, we've vaccinated in those communities. We went back there to do the vaccination again in the community. And we believe that because vaccination protects against the illness. So, there's no problem in the state. We've gone back to the where the two local government, the area, particular areas where we have these cases of, of diphtheria. We went back to reversing them there. Thank you very much. I've been speaking with uh, Dr. Bilo, the Director, Public Health, Osho State Ministry of Health, telling us more about what the state government is doing about diphtheria in the state. Let me back to you in the studio. Thank you very much. Femi, we hope the efforts will yield to results in curbing the spread of the disease. Now, the Minister of Niger Delta Development, Abubakar Mama, says the current administration is focused on delivering its objective of providing critical infrastructure in key sectors. The minister gave the assurance when he received a delegation of the primaries of the Niger Delta region 
who visited the ministry to welcome the minister while also presenting their demands that roads which link their community to other parts of the region have become impassable, leading to reduction in economic activities. United States. And um, the challenge we have mainly in this country today is a network of roads, which are very, very bad. So the challenge of uh, fixing the infrastructure is a very huge one. But I have no idea of doubt that the president, Senator Bolat Tinubu, that we are working with, is a man that uh, listens and is a man who is committed towards improving the lot of Nigerians. So we have no idea of doubt that something will be done in this regard. By the grace of God, we are praying that Almighty God will give you the wisdom, the strength, the enablement to be able to pilot this ministry to the betterment of the Niger Delta and the entire Federal Republic of Nigeria. The president of the Akpamiri Union, Samson Aturu, commended President Tinubu for efforts made to resuscitate the economy so far and expressed the hope that the region will soon begin to witness positive transformation. Minister for Solid Minerals Development, Dele Alake, has restated the importance of value addition by any company with requisite license and permits to mine minerals, as he made a clarion call to potential investors that the era of exporting raw materials is over. Alake stated this in Lado village, Nasra state, as the foundation soon lane ceremony of a factory for processing of lithium battery. While acknowledging the significance of the foundation stone lane ceremony for processing of 16,000 tons lithium battery, saying it aligns with the cardinal policy of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu led administration to create wealth and generate employment opportunities for the team in the youth through value addition to the extractive industry. To come and invest in the solid minerals industrial sector in Nigeria, henceforth must add local value. Without that, we shall no longer license any company, anybody, any institution, any corporate organization that does not have local value addition as an integral and critical factor of the execution of its project. The minister commended the courage and enterprise of the governor of Nasrallah State, Abdullahi Suli, for the actualization of the successful groundbreaking ceremony and advised other state governors to imbibe the economic recovery policy of the federal government. The Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency, Smeden, says it will continue to prioritize the empowerment of youth and women in its skill acquisition programs as part of efforts to create wealth for Nigeria. Director General of Smeden, Olawale Fasonya, said this as the closing of a digital skills training for micro, small and medium enterprises beneficiaries in Abuja. Musa Abubakar reports. The three days long ICT training program for these participants has come to an end and the next move is to explore the digital market space. I learned a lot about uh, digital marketing, how to promote my services, that is my goods and services, my products. I learned a lot. Basic things about digital technology and digital business and digital trade that you would not expect to know. With the growth of digital ecosystem, Smedon, in partnership with Daho Global Resource Limited, is empowering women and youth at a time when micro and small medium scale enterprises continue to drive economic growth and development in the country. The world is going digital, and the world is not a small place. You can be in Nigeria and be doing business in the U.S., you know. You don't necessarily have to uh, do your business until you have a shop or a workplace. In your bedroom, you can, once you have these tools, you can do a lot of things, you know. So this is the idea. And I'm also glad that at least most of the faces I'm seeing here are youth, and that is our idea. 
About 2,000 beneficiaries were trained across the 36 states of the Federation as Smedon continued to make the country's growing youth population productive. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NT News. Still on capacity building, about 140 women and girls trained in computer hardware and mobile phone repairs have been issued certificates among other empowerment tools by the Mariam Babangida National Center for Women Development. Ngozi Techniki reports that six to eight of the technicians are women living with various degrees of disabilities. The 140 women were trained for one week by different resource persons on computer hardware and mobile phone repairs. And today, they are happy for the time spent in the center. The Director General of the center, Asabe Vilitabashio, said such training became pertinent in view of the global development in information technology and digital economy. The DG applauded the all-inclusive initiative of President Tinubu towards ensuring that no one is left out in advancing the nation's technology hub. The president is very passionate about women and he knows that uh, women are the drivers of the economy in any, nation, in any country and especially in Nigeria and he knows that the world is going global now. The women were full of high expectations in utilizing their new knowledge. Because we are really left behind, but with this, we will be able to compete with the other people around. With this opportunity that I get and I have, I'm going to open business center. We say thank you very, very much. We promise to make you proud as we'll be hearing of our exploits in the digital world. The newly trained technicians we are issued with brand new laptops as part of startup kits. Ngozi Technical, NTA News. Let's join Adeola at the Center of Excellence to guide us through stories from that end. Hello, Deola. It's over to you. Lami. Evacuation and recovery are ongoing at the scene of a multiple accident that resulted in an explosion that occurred in a Ijora area of Lagos Thursday. Post-assessment reports by the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency and National Emergency Management Agency indicate that 11 vehicles were burned in the inferno and no life lost, Amaka Owo reports. Wasu Akinpelu, one of the truck drivers involved in the multiple accident along Igomo Ijara Road, recounts his ordeal. He got on the bad road. One side is the middle of the road. The other attacker is followed the other side. Huge, he said, it's all to hold on. He used the leg for this payment. That of that of that of all. I said, waiting. I know, I know, look at himself. I just follow the guy, come out. Before we know now, there's fire. The accident has been attributed to a collision impact from an articulated tanker loaded with premium motor spirit, which crashed into a truck, triggering the fire. Fortunately, occupants of the vehicles escaped safely. The wreckage of the affected vehicles is the aftermath of the accident and spilled PMS, which flowed through the drainage into surrounding communities. Sector Commander Federal Road Safety Corps Babatun de Farin Loye, after assessing the accident scene, said the incident could have been averted if the drivers had applied caution. This is not unconnected with the, um, what do you call it, the back portion of the road, actually, because government is trying to maintain it, as you can see. I think it's an avoidable thing if the vehicle had not been mechanically mechan 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 deficient. The National Emergency Management Agency and other relevant authorities are working together to ensure public safety. Lagos State uh, uh, Waste Management Agency is being brought in now to clear all these areas. Residents and road users are also appealing to the government to put the deplorable road in order for safety of lives and property. Meanwhile, normalcy has been restored to the affected area over to Dela Bridge, where another tanker loaded with diesel overturned while ascending the bridge in the early hours of Thursday, spilling its contents. In Lagos, Amaka O, NT News. 
In addition to living up to its statutory mandate, the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Imasa also contributes to youth development. The agency does this through provision of skills and vocational centers in all the six geopolitical zones of the country. This was disclosed during the visit of a Senate Committee on Marine Transportation to Nimasa offices in Lagos. Polagia Kim has more. I'm distinguished senator, I'm a young senator. Members of the Senate Committee on Marine Transport on their first oversight function, headed by Senator Wasiu E. Shinlokun, the committee members visited Nimasa to have first-time information about the duties and mode of operation of the agency. The senators were taking round all facilities of the agency in Lagos, which include operational office, search and rescue base clinic in Apapa, and regional maritime control tower in Kirikiri. While expressing satisfaction with the quality of facilities put in place for smooth operations of the agency, members of the committee stress the need to amend some of the agency's act in line with current situations. We want NEMASA also, as critical stakeholders, to look through the legislation, offered advice, what they think that we can do to improve the legislation. This is, their, this is the time for them to come on board, make suggestions for the benefit of um, the maritime security. Director General of NEMASA, Dr. Bashir Jamo, informed the committee of the agency's readiness to maximize every opportunity available in marine and blue economy, which is said will be of a great economic benefit to the country taking into consideration the number of vessels that make use of the Nigerian waters. We have already, uh, you know, produced a, a kind of uh, a, a strategy for the implementation of the blue economy, even though that strategy is only for the maritime industry. Now, since we are marine and blue economy ministry, so it's going to be expanded with other sectors. The oversight visit also brought to the fore the need for all security agencies within the Nigerian waterways to have clear and well-defined role. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. And those are the stories from Lagos. We shall rejoin Lami in Abuja after this break for more on Nationwide to stay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. Traditional rulers across Nigeria have harped on the need to sustain unity in the country despite the differences in ethnicity. These thoughts resonated as the 80th birthday lecture and book launch of the former Secretary General of Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, Dr. Edmund Dakuru, the Amayanabu of Nembe Kingdom, Ekene Dulwe reports. Sounds of celebration from Bayasa. King Edmond Dakoro, the Amayanabo of Nembe Kingdom, has turned 80, and it was a gathering of kings, queens, and royalty that turned up to grace the occasion. The guests cut across several regions in the country, and these Within traditional the leaders say is a true representation of Nigeria, which they must work hard to sustain. We are here to pronounce that yes, the unity of the institution is really real and cannot be thwarted by anybody. They left their kingdoms to honor you because of who you are, because of what you stand for, because of what you do. The books, Leaps of Legacy, the story of King Edmond Dakoro, and Towards a Safe and Sustainable Future chronicles the efforts made by the celebrants to bolster Nigeria's oil sector during his teens as Minister of State for Petroleum and Secretary General of OPEC. Mingi of Nimbe, Dr. Dakoru, then led the team that discovered the oil field Bonga. Today, Bonga is the biggest oil field on and offshore. For the key, diligence is the foundation of true success. When faced with a task, I try to do my best, do my utmost, leaving nothing behind. And when you do that, you get the peace that comes with diligence because you have left nothing behind. The occasion also provided an opportunity 
for these stakeholders to discuss other sundry issues in Abuja, Ekene, Ndulwe, NTA News. Nationwide continues in Meiduguri with Abubakar for more stories. Hello, Abubakar. It's always good to see you, Lami, and thank you for joining us. Federal government is committed to reviving social economic activities around the shores of the Lake Chad region to scale up food security and productive engagements among the communities in its catchment area. Minister of State for Water, Resources and Sanitation, Bello Muhammad Goronyo, revealed this while on assessment visit to Alo Dam in Maiduguri. Morjana to Hassan Hasmo on that. Large bodies of water like this, 112 million cubic meter capacity, Alo Dam in Borno State, fit into the federal government's drive for food security, economic diversification, and mass employment. The minister is on a mission to assess ongoing projects and programs within the Chad Basin Development Authority in tune with the vision of strengthening the operations of the 12 river basin authorities in Nigeria. Bello Mohamed Guranyo, while at the Borno State Government House, acknowledged the support of Governor Babagano Umarazulum to the CBDA, assuring the state of a more productive collaboration with his ministry. The Excellencies plan to connect Chad Basin Authority, uh, SCIP, at a new multi powerhouse to the national grid or construct any other alternative source of power to promote irrigated farming to ensure food security is another intervention which is highly appreciated. And I assure you, the government of Borno State will partner with your ministry to ensure we support all farmers who are willing to go back to Marte so that they can farm and uh, they can have source of uh, livelihood. For no state believe, deputy governor, Usman Umar Kadapur, lauded the foresight of the minister for making the move towards the state activities of the Chad Basin, describing the mission as booster to social economic status of the state. In May degree, Murjana to Hassan, NTA News. Away from the Minister of State for Water Resources visit now to tell you that divisional gender desk officers operating under the Nigeria Police Force have been equipped on the best way to handle cases associated with sexual and gender-based violence in tune with global best practices. This was at a five-day in-house training held in Meiduguri, the Borno State capital. Mohamed Goni will now tell us more. Statistics have shown that a large number of the civilian population in Borno State have experienced one form of gender-based violence or the other, hence a growing challenge for these 35 divisional gender desk officers convened here for specialized training. Organized by a chart basing support framework and funded by British High Commission, the program is designed to usher in a softer and friendly approach to handling victims of sexual exploitations and violence. To the participants, the event is an eye-opener that will add value and dignity to the Nigerian police force, considering the alarming rate of abuse among the citizenry. I will make sure the training I learned here, I, I'm using it in my day-to-day -day activities. We are ever ready to accept their cases and we believe their cases will be confidential. State Commissioner of Police, Yusuf Mohamed Lowell, Women Affairs and Social Development Commissioner Zuera Gambo, and Police Advisor from the Child Basing Sector, from the Child Basing Support Framework, Elizabeth MacLeod, challenged the trainees to consider the workshop as a paradigm shift for a more robust community policing. We want to see an improvement in our response, how we display empathy. We want to emphasize on the empathy aspect. They must share in the pains of the victims. They must protect their privacy and those of their families. I hope that after this training, the 35 participants here go back to their divisions across Maduguri and really apply the knowledge. The trainees have all received certificates of participation in Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NT News. If you're just joining us, you're on to Nationwide on the Nigerian Television Authority. Let us at this point take a break, but there will be more stories for you in our Makadi Network Center thereafter. <laughs> For staying and a warm welcome to Makudi. As a deliberate measure to enhance security of life and property and to fast track the return of internally displaced persons to their ancestral homes, 
Governor Hyacinth Alia has plucked off exercises enduring Peace 3 of the Nigerian Army in Benue State. Elia Sitia reports that the event took place at the 401 Special Forces Brigade Step Up Headquarters in Agan, Makudi local government area of the state. The flag off of the exercise enduring Peace 3 of the Nigerian Army is targeted at addressing security concerns in the state, which have claimed several lives and created humanitarian crisis. Commander of the 401 Special Forces Brigade, Brigadier General Alami Rabiu, and that of 4 Special Forces Command, Major General Hillary Insanse, the exercise aims at addressing emerging security issues in the state. They disclose that officers will be trained to enhance their capabilities in handling security threats. The exercise is hinged upon the desire of the Commander of Four Special Forces Command to continuously improve the capabilities of the troops to meet up with the emerging security threats. These training exercises are in preparation for this real-time exercise that will take place in some parts of the country to checkmate the criminal and other skirmishes that threatens the peace of the country. Governor Hyacinth earlier while flagging of the exercise says it is in fulfillment of his resolve to read the state of insecurity and ensure the return of internally displaced persons to their ancestral homes. It is my very firm belief that why we have them not only in the host community here, conversations are already going on, very top ones, to ensure that we are skirmishes of crisis are still ridden. They're coming in there to do us the favor of ensuring that peace returns 100% in Benue State. The exercise which began on 2nd October 2023 is to last till 5th January 2024. In Makudi, Elias, ETF, News. In a related development, Benue State Governor Reverend Father Hyacinth Alia has charged the people of Konshisha and Oju local government areas of Benue State to embrace peace as the issue of boundary demarcation between the two communities will soon be a theme of the past. Deputy Governor Sam Ode, who represented the governor, made the remarks during the inauguration of Konshisha Ojo Peace Communities in Makudi, the Benue State capital. Simbiat Agbaji reports. The inauguration of 22 member peace committee is the first implementation stage for the process following the signing of peace agreement earlier in August by stakeholders in Konshisha and Oju local government areas. Senior National Expert Advisor, Center for Humanitarian Dialogue, Ibrahim Sali Hassan said the journey began with dialogues for about eight to nine months and both communities have agreed to certain recommendations to ensure the agreements are implemented. The recipe for this success is trust. And we discussed about trust building. And in the words of somebody, not my words, trust is not a destination that you have arrived, that is an outcome, but it is a process. Deputy Governor Sam Udi described the process as a journey of hope for both communities. He said the success of the peace process depends on the members of the committee and pledged full commitment of the government to the matter. Uh, the boundary or the borderline is just an artificial creation. What is really, really important is for our communities to imbibe the spirit of brotherhood. In separate remarks, traditional rulers who are also co-chairmen of the committees appreciated the Benue State Government for their tireless efforts. We will do our best. We will follow the ways you have been showing us to make peace. So we are showing you any of us, that is both sides, that is causing any problem right from today. We will hand them over to the law enforcement agents. They express hope that the dialogue would yield fruitful results. In Makudi, 
Simbiat Agbaji, NTA News. That report runs off our contribution from Makudi. The nationwide continues with, with Lami in Abuja. Thank you very much. Now, the Sultan of Sokoto and President General Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Muhammad Saad Abubakar, has asked Muslims to look out, to be on the lookout for the new moon of Rabiul Thani, 1445 after Hijra, on Saturday, 14th October 2023. A statement signed by Professor Sambawali Junaidu, Chairman, Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council, Sokoto says Saturday is the 29th of Rabiul Awal and the date look out for the new moon. The sighting of the new moon should be reported to the nearest village or district head for onward communication to the Sultan. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NAKAN, has pegged the minimum deposit for Hajj 2024 at 4,500,000 Naira. The decision to back the fair was jointly reached with the Forum of Executive Secretaries of Pilgrims Welfare Boards, Agencies and Commissions. In a statement, Nakan's Head of Corporate Affairs, Hajiya Fatima Senda Usara, indicates that this becomes necessary to be in tandem with the dollar rate that will determine the final cost of the Hajj, which may require the intended pilgrims to balance up or have refund. The wisdom behind the minimum deposit revolves around the states and the commission to estimate how many pilgrims will be eligible by 4th November 2023, three weeks before now, when the Saudi, that's the Saudi date line for conclusion of preparatory meetings with service providers. 2024 Hajj intended pilgrims are reminded of the time constraints with regards to the final date of funds remittance into the coffers of Saudi Arabian accounts for the processing of visas as the Commission is expected to complete payments for accommodation and holy sites contracts by February 2024 to enable commencement of visa issuance by 3rd March up to 29th April 2024. In view of this challenge, Interested applicants are enjoined to make deposits in time to enable their respective boards to complete registration and remittance of Hajj fare by 5th January 2024. Intended pilgrims are warned not to hold the commission responsible if after paying a low amount of deposit, such an intended pilgrim fails to be counted among eligible applicants for the 2024 Hajj exercise. Now, the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations for Political Parties and Good Governance has appealed to presidential candidates in the last election to join hands with President Bola Ahmed Tunubu to provide dividends of democracy to citizens. The coalition says the legitimacy of the president's certificate has been verified and authenticated by credible sources. So, it's time to work together towards ensuring that the country attains its developmental agenda. Charities and institutions saddled with the responsibility of authenticating the president's certificate has revealed the needful. It has still not brought these baseless, unfounded and trivial allegations by these jokers to rest because the motives are very clear. We want to explore this avenue to thank Mr. President very profusely, very profoundly, for the level of maturity, the level of decorum and sportsmanship he has exhibited thus far by way of ignoring those distractions. It is indeed a leadership attribute worthy of emulation. The group advised Nigerians to pray and support President Tunubu rather than engage in failed uncharitable remarks that undermine the office of the president and appeal to authorities to take stern measures on such action, no matter how highly placed the person may be. Igbo Kwenu for Tunubu and Shetima under the umbrella of Omale Goku Progressive Initiative says PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar should desist from image laundering of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu and allow Nigeria to flourish on the renewed hope agenda of the president. The group condemned the questioning of President Tunubu's Chicago State University legitimacy and urged Atiku to be constructive 
as an opposition party man and wait for another four years if he wants us to unseat the incumbent president. I want to use this opportunity to appeal to all Nigerians to continue showing their understanding and confidence in the ability of Mr. President and his vice to solve many of our problems, especially economic security issues, confronting the country today. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is determined to tackle all these issues from all roads and not applying cosmetic solution to paper in the crack. No matter how, let us come in one front and support this great man. Even though he's from the Southwest, does not really matter. Remember, Nigeria is one. Unity and peace. That's what that matters most. The group commended the president for coming up with economic reforms capable of putting the country on a positive trajectory and pledged total support for the success of his administration. Omalegoku Progressive Initiative added that President Tinubu has demonstrated virtues of truth to leadership, patriotism, transformational policies and programs, as well as uncommon unifier. A new partnership between the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA Network Centre, Enugu, and the state government has been established. Under the partnership, Enugu state government will see to the station's need of stable power supply for coverage and broadcast of activities in the state without disruption. Chicago has details of the meeting between Governor Pitamba and NTA Enugu's management. Over the years, NTA has maintained its wide reach, a feat which Governor Peter Mba acknowledged and commended the authority for educating and uniting the people. The governor pointed out that the NTA has demonstrated capacity on the effective coverage of government activities, which he said is critical to the nation's social economic development, security, and industrial harmony. Willing out his administration developmental strides in areas of education, health, transportation, agriculture, infrastructure, and ICT. The governor looked forward to a collaboration that would project the state government's lofty vision of a new Enugu state. Zonal Director NTA Enugu Network Center, Wadi Elobike, thanked the governor for recognizing the station's pivotal role in promoting unity and progress in the country. She said the station has the capacity to remain a viable platform for objective news and entertainment. The NTA management was tasked to evolve ways to reposition the station by embracing modern trends in television programming and information dissemination. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. Now, as voices intensify across the globe on the protection of the rights and welfare of the girl child, human rights activists in Nigeria are strengthening conversations on the need to invest in all-round developments for this category of the population. Elizabeth Omori reports that this work by the Way Foundation is aimed at raising awareness on the need to put an end to female genital mutilation and victimization of the girl child. I also want to see a female Nigerian president and I want females in Nigeria to be taken more seriously. As my parents put me first before my brothers. They insist investing in education and full implementation of gender policies will go a long way in assisting the girl child actualize her goals. Where uh, we have more like the parties, Ekiti State and Russian states. So uh, what we do is like we try to create this awareness for people to see reasons why it should be stopped. These things pushing women backward should not be. That they should also be in the forefront because in most cases some women are even much more resourceful than men. former Minister of Commerce during the Second Republic and the Sardonan Duse Senator Bellume Tama Yusuf is dead. He died in the early hours of Friday at his residence in Kanu after a brief illness. Late Bellume Tama died at the age of 80. He left behind two wives, nine children and many grandchildren. 
And that brings us to the end of Nationwide for today. We thank you for watching. Join us at 6, 7 and 9 for more stories. Have a good evening. Thank <laughs> you.